Okay, hi there. Welcome to a macro video. Let's spend a few minutes looking at the debt service burden for the UK government. So UK Chancellor Sunak faces difficult fiscal policy choices as the UK economy recovers from the impact of the pandemic. The budget deficit soared in 2020 and so too did the national debt. And as a result, uh, the amount that the government is paying in interest to holders of government bonds is climbing rapidly. And this is known as the debt service burden. Indeed, here's a staggering stat for you. The interest payments, just the interest payments on UK government debt were over five and a half billion pounds in one month in October 2021. And that was nearly four billion more than a year before. So what do we mean by the debt service burden? Well, in simple terms, it means the cost of repaying your debt, the cost of meeting the interest payments on the debt that you have. And uh, the UK's government, uh, UK government borrows a lot of money, clearly, and is running up a, a big debt mountain on which interest has to be paid. So for the UK government, the debt service burden is the interest on the national debt. And the national debt is defined as the government's stock of outstanding debt, debt yet to be repaid. The latest figures are that public sector debt was £2.3 trillion at the end of October 2021, or over 95% of GDP. And we haven't seen debt of that level since the early 1960s, in part because government support for individuals and businesses during the pandemic led to a more than increase of more than £204 billion in day-to-day -day government spending. So debt, shown here as a share of GDP, represents the amount of money owed by the government to the private sector is largely made up of gilts or bonds and they're issued or sold to investors by, by the government. And you can see that debt is now closing in on 100% of GDP. It has been high, of course, during the, the war years, uh, but this is certainly a significant change in the post-war period. Now, this pie chart shows the composition or the breakdown of the debt issued by the UK government to cover the shortfall between state spending and tax revenues. And essentially it tells you for how many years the government has been able to borrow money. For example, long conventional gilts are where bonds are issued and not repaid for 15 years or more. Or short gilts are uh, bonds issued, which will be, will be repaid between naught and seven years. Now, a key one is in green there. Index linked bonds or gilts. Now, index linked gilts issued by the government are bonds on which the interest paid per every six months to the hold of the bond, the interest is linked to the retail price index or a rate of inflation. Of course, this is designed to maintain the uh, the real value of the gilts, uh, the real value of the interest on the gilts that have been issued. And you can see that just over one fifth or 21 percent of government debt has been issued in index linked gilts. So this debt service burden, I think, is a key concept to build into evaluation. For example, when discussing the pros and cons of an increase in, in government borrowing to support or stimulate the economy. So who, who gets the interest, for example? And crucially, if the debt service burden goes up, if the government's spending nearly £6 billion a month on just on the interest, is there an opportunity cost if the debt service burden rises from year to year? Do debt interest payments matter? Well, I think they do. Obviously, debt interest must be repaid. Uh, you have to repay the interest on debt. Uh, the government, by the way, has never missed any debt repayments. But if the government's spending more on debt interest, well, that might crowd out or squeeze out the chance for extra spending in priority areas such as transport, health or education. Or if the government's spending more on debt interest, it might make it harder for the government to cut personal taxes, perhaps ahead of an election. The big danger for the government at the moment is that with inflation rising already at 4.2% in October 2021, uh, that will lead to even higher debt interest because one fifth of the bonds issued are index linked. And higher interest rates generally in the bond market will also contribute to a rising debt service burden. So the government's under great pressure. However, 
one third of all government debt in the UK is actually owed to the Bank of England, partly because of their quantitative easing policy or QE. And that interest, of course, then gets recirculated uh, to the Treasury. So this rise in debt interest payments, I think, is going to become a focus of the Chancellor and the government uh, in the months to come. Uh, the government wants to avoid a big rise in the debt interest spending if it can, although it may be actually have little control over this. Uh, but it much depends on what's going to happen to the rate of inflation and also to market bond yields in the months to come. But this is definitely a topic worth keeping an eye on uh, as part of your study of fiscal policy. OK, thanks for joining in. Take care. See you soon.